received your letter dated April 12, saying that you want to invite me to Australia. Thank you very much for your invitation, as well as for your preceding letter, which I found very beautiful. But to my regret, I can't come to see you soon because I have a work to finish, designed for a cultural centre from which I can't escape. To make matters worse, I'm not in good health now. I had been out of condition since last June, and on August the 10th, I was stricken with a cerebral thrombosis, a stroke of apoplexy. Fortunately, it was not so serious. Oh, yeah. And I could be discharged from the hospital in two months. <laughs> Understatement. But as you know, it may be impossible to recover perfectly from this, perfectly from this kind of disease. Besides, I am now preparing a publication of the memorial lecture which I made in last April at the time of my retirement. For above reasons, there will be no possibility of my immediate travel abroad. If I could support your study of architecture from Kyoto, it would be in the following three points. One, the architecture. Isn't it implement without limit? For example, Japan has a set of aesthetic, aesthetical tea ceremony implements. They are the works completed as a result of thoroughgoing pursuit of implementality. I can see brows furrowing. And then up here he's written in his immaculate handwriting and, and he says, needless to confirm of the transcendence of its implementality, not as a stepping out, but as a transcendence at the centre or the heart of the implement. Okay? Think about that. Two, it is necessary to grasp certainly and precisely the authenticity of the landscape of the site of the building authenticity. That's what you've been doing. For this purpose, according to a manner of Heidegger, the German philosopher, one must listen to the silent voice of the earth from all of one's heart and body. Three, I want you to believe that your sincerity and effort towards the architecture can be transfused into your work itself. That is, the more serious you are, the more serious your work will be, and the more dignified you are, the more dignified your work will be. These three matters may seem very simple, but I think it will be never easy nor common to lay the life of an architect on them. What a beautiful letter. And then he finishes up, saying, I ask you, never hurry over a ticket for me. 